hasn't worked on us. It's done the opposite. It's like being tortured every day. We're so awake. It's incredible. And we know they're one major ace in the hole, what they're going to pull. It's already uh, incremental uh, shutdown of the economy. They're going to drop the hammer because they know they're running out of time. Repeat what you said last night in the interview for Obama Deception 2. Break down the battle space. Break down the future. Break down the destiny we have and how hard we better work now to try to reverse it before they completely implode the economy. Number one mission is get prepared. Number two, expose they're the ones behind the implosion, as they've done everywhere else. Stuart Rhodes, founder of Oath Keepers, OathKeepers.org. Organization is exploding. Your military contacts give you the same info we get. Uh, half the military is awake right now. It's accelerating. The enemy is in crisis. Stuart Rhodes. And then special warfare personnel is more like 75 percent. And this is the problem they have: is the powers that be understand that there's now a growing, um, sizable percentage of the population who can no longer be fooled. They're taking the red pill. They see what's going on, and they're no, no longer manipulable with, with their uh, false flags or their use of fear. So they they know that their time is limited. Given enough time, we will prevail. They can wind up like 1989 East Germany. We had a mass stand down of the military and that stand up of the people and without the support of the military the Stasi were running and hiding because they couldn't they couldn't overpower the people there's no way they could do it so that's possible but i think that before we get to that tipping point of that mass awareness which we will if we're allowed the time i think they'll try to pull a plug on the economy it's all they have left they have their, their armageddon option of the economic neutron bomb collapse the dollar kill the dollar blame it on the chinese Especially under, under uh, the cover of a war with Syria, they could say, hey, we urge Syria to get rid of uh, chemical weapons and the Russians are trying to tell you economic. They wanted that war as political cover, but now that's failing. The, their gun grab failed. Uh, I mean, they're desperate. So they, they, they still could pull out the plug on the economy and kill the dollar and start a run on the dollar worldwide. And that could be potentially as destructive as a nuclear exchange or an EMP, EMP strike because if you kill the economy, Americans don't have food storage. Americans are, are the most unprepared population on the face That's of been done by design. They've encouraged that. Absolutely. They, they prepared themselves. Relentlessly, they've been, they've been putting in place mechanisms for control, all the weapons they would need, all the, all the armed, armored vehicles they would need, and all the ammunition they would need to control us or kill us. Did you see that Marine Corps colonel that went public and said they're pre Redeploying everything against us? Absolutely. You bet. And anybody who's been in, in military training understands um, logistics. Logistics wins the battle. It's not grab your rifle and, and, and run out the street and break. It's mass and supply chain and then initiative. It's logistics. And so on our side, they're preparing the future battle space on their side for their benefit. On our side, we need to be careful about being distracted with all this bombardment of negative information that they're doing this and doing that. Let's go protest here, let's go protest there. So be careful about that because we may have so much blood in our bodies. A good analogy is that. They're hooked up to an unlimited blood bag through Soros or through the Federal Reserve, like you just said. You know, the funding for NPR is, is billions of dollars versus what do we get? On our side, it's individuals who have to fund our campaigns. And so be careful what you go and spend your money on or your, or your time and your, and your sweat because you only have so much. And so rather than getting money around protesting everywhere, sometimes protests make a big difference. I think the symbolic virtue of the veterans in, in Washington, D.C., the World War II veterans, kicking down the barricades going in anyway is, is very valuable. Something like that is worth getting behind. Sure, a Second Amendment, a nullification. I mean, I think it's full spectrum. Get ready yourself, but also be on the offensive in the info war. I say do everything. Sure, but be careful about spending all your time just running around waving a sign. They want you to do that. What they don't want you to do is in your local areas, stand up. Oh, oh, I agree. You need to be going to talk to the police chief and warning them, giving them info, finding out, getting intelligence with where they stand. You need to be getting with the military veterans, preparing for not fighting, but preparing to be leaders in your area. Absolutely. That's what we started in the industry with the other teachers. We're calling it the civilian pres uh, civilization preservation teams. And the whole focus is on getting our community squared away at the very bottom, right down in the neighborhood watches, right down in veterans halls in particular. Because we've gotten the guns and the ammo. Now we need to really do the boots on the ground, ready to take care of our neighbors. That'll put us in the leadership position immediately. The logistics. You need to have the ability to feed your neighbors, to have communications, to have clean water and power, and to have emergency medical care. Because by the way, when stuff collapses, they're coming anyways. Right, that's what you need. That's what you need. Look, any hurricane, any tornado, any, any natural disaster, what do you wind up needing? You need clean water, you need shelter, you need to keep warm, you need medical care and food. Those are things you need. So why?
Why not get that squared away in your own neighborhood right now so you are able to take care of things? You are able to be the force for good in your community rather than them all being desperate and scared and relying on FEMA coming in who says, hey, yeah, sure, we'll give you food. Turn in your guns, turn in your neighbors. Okay. And the police are already priming the pump all over the country in Detroit and L.A. saying we'll give you grocery money for your guns. You bet. You'll get, you'll get the EBT card, you can turn in your neighbor, you turn in your guns. So we need to make sure that we're strong. If you have a squirt away community that's much more like the National Guard will refuse the orders, the police will refuse the orders, and active duty military in particular will say no to gun confiscation. But they plan on having all the welfare folks riot, where if you're not ready, you'll bag the military in. Well, sure, and not just welfare folks, average Americans who've got a nine to five jobs right now and how much food they're in their, in their house. Two days. Three or four days at the most. Right, probably more like two days. So, wait a week, two, they're just as desperate as any. And the globalists admit they've done all this by design, getting us ready like the Ukraine under the Soviets for the cultural re-education like Mao did. They did the same thing in China. This is a tried and true plan. David Rockefeller said, we will use food as a weapon in America. Sure, you look at the historic precedents in uh, Stalinist Russia. Stalin starved out the kulaks, independent farmers, confiscated all their food and killed them through mass starvation. And the same thing happened with Mao in China. Anytime the government wants to stop a mass of people who they cannot just kill outright with weapons that will use starvation. By the way, we're not just saying this. This is on record. They, the globalists have all written. We are under globalist occupation. We've still got some resistance and some media. People are waking up. But they really would like to do this if they can get away with it. Sure, so we need to see it as they're shipping the future battle space. We know a fight's coming. You need to re recognize and realize that. If we can do it, like I said, with a enough of awakening, we could be a peaceful a peaceful re revolution, a mass stand down like in 1990s Germany. But we should presume the worst that before that can happen, they'll pull the plug and try to starve us out. What I like about your plan is that it's historical, it's well-researched, and you're not saying Oath Keepers runs at all. It's a basic blueprint of peaceful preparation and resistance. Civilization preservation teams start them everywhere. The enemy can't infiltrate us everywhere. Plus, they've lost the major initiative. The average police, and especially the military, now know we told the truth because the Patriots decades ago warning people. They're like, wow, these folks knew what was coming. They're now listening to us. They love their family. They know their, their paycheck doesn't go anywhere anymore. They know they're being sold out. They know George Washington's being brainwashed. How did the globalists miscalculate to openly badmouth the Founding Fathers in the official Army Training Manual now? I mean, that shows the traitors have taken over. I mean, that's conviction right there. I think it's their own hubris. They, they, like, I went to Yale Law School, and I can tell you, it's an incestuous community. They talk to each other only. They go to these special uh, confabs with other elites, and so they don't really see what's going on in small-town America. They, just, they believe their own bull, basically, their own property. They're smoking their own dope. Exactly, smoking their own dope. And so they have the hubris and arrogance to believe they got it all figured out. They have not successfully undermine our culture they have not successfully don't they know that the patriots for 50 years saw this coming mainly military guys that were inside the intelligence briefings and learned about this takeover they've been trying forever don't they know we have a massive jump on them and have been warning people for decades no i think they don't i think they, they, they believe they've got it all figured out and they're too smart but they're too smart for their own good so they're they're uh, intellectual idiots and they've taken our restraint as weakness as well that's right same thing with the Founding Fathers. They believed that because they had put up with so much abuse and a long period of abuses, that they would never fight. And they were very wrong. Well, I hope they listen, because I know they're watching. I know the White House is watching on record. You globalists will be brought to justice when we defeat you. And remember Nuremberg. It's going to happen again. Democratic Congresswoman suggests martial law to end government shutdown. And she means political martial law be used really on constitutional procedures to just force force this through and ignore what the House is doing. And New Republic called for Obama uh, two days ago to do exactly what uh, Yeltsin did, but the Duma had clearly been kicked out, though, so that was more legitimate, even though he was a crook as well. Attack the Congress, basically throw them out. Uh, I mean, it really shows the mindset of these people. Like when the internal IRS memos came out, it turned out they were ordered by Obama to go after the Tea Party. The memos were like, these are scary, dangerous people. We've got to shut them down. It's like they don't want communism. They're scary. So the mid-level people, even though she was one of the head IRS people, but she's still mid-level. They're like communist and socialist ideologues. But the people above them are just piratical megabanks. But they're cannon fodder. It's like that White House petition they had. They got like 100,000 signatures to form 
communist uh, militias to take on the Tea Party. I mean, they're dreaming of like their Che Guevara and they're going to take us out, Stuart Rose. The use of words, he said, we can pull the strings behind them, are not going to institute world socialism. You know, so there's some utopia for them. They're going to want to kill them off at the end.